of Ireland, territory in favour of the visitors as well, and that flows through to carries, metres made, defenders beaten. In fact, as we look down those numbers, it's little wonder they hold a lead, and perhaps maybe they could hold one of uh, a little bit more with between them and the Australians. 12 points tonight, all from the boots of uh, Johnny Sexton and Bernard Foley. And uh, perhaps it is a fitting conclusion to this test series with Shane Horgan and Michael Liner. It's been First punch went to the Australians in Brisbane, it came back to the Irish in Melbourne. What's the read on this? Is it a game where they feel like it's, it's less about winning and more about not losing? Yeah, well, I think um, Tim Horne mentioned the possession uh, stats in, in the last game for Ireland. I think it's, it's, it's coming through, through here. It's making things a little bit easier for them. It's making, putting them in the game, in the position that they're in. But it's definitely a nervy affair. Uh, the quality has dropped off from last week. There's been a lot of mistakes, some elements of quality, but also from an Ireland perspective, you'd be worried about a couple of the traits in their play, in particular going in around um, either side of the rook and not further out, uh, could lead to trouble later in the second half. A couple of examples of that we'll show yeah. in a moment, but in a low-scoring tight affair, it's been a couple of key moments where the referee's been involved. The Israel Folau yellow card late on was one that... So, am, I, am I right to say it divides opinion here, Michael? What's your read on yeah, this I one? I think so. I mean, I think, you know, Falao's, he's so good at doing these things. Now, he's on his own there. Now, I think competing up there is fine, but it's when Falao comes down, he drags Omani down there. But my question here is, is CJ Standers lifted up his own man. Falao's on his own. Standers lifted him up and almost thrown him up into the air. Does he not have a responsibility to bring that man down safely? That's what's in the rule. Sure. It doesn't mention that man has to be on your own side or the opposition. So there's no issue here with Falao in don't competition think so. for the ball? I don't. Mean, well, he, that's what he does. He's up there. He's actually got really high. But just as he's coming down, the referee and the TMO have said, you'll, you'll see it here. Just as he comes down, his arm rests on Omani there and just gra there, grabs him around the chest. Okay. And that's why he got a yellow card and probably justifiably so. Uh, I, I'm not so certain. I'm sort of looking from a back three perspective and a, and a player like Falao. There's almost a, a price to be paid for going up against him yeah. like that. It's particularly, particularly when you get thrown up yeah. by your own man. So I, I think there's still, uh, there is a contact in the air, but that's still part of the game. Sure. He's the dominant one. He actually wins yeah. the tap back. So, uh, you know, I, it's unfortunate and it's terrible that the injuries happened. Yeah. But it's almost a sort of consequence of the game and a consequence yeah. of playing against a player yeah. like Israel Folau. Sure, we talk about a duty. Managers to take, get a sidestep in and keep in touch and retain the ball back and that ultimately led up to this situation, Michael. Yeah, I think this, you know, this is a, against the post here. Conor Murray's done this before and the penalty there was for, um, I think it was um, Scott Kepu, I Kepu think. lying on the ground there. He's got to lie somewhere and he's not affecting the ball coming out. But uh, Anyway, it, it was a penalty, and that, and, that, and that was that was the other sides of uh, of him. You know, he didn't take the ball in the air. You know, I don't think he's trying to do anything malicious there. He's trying to extend his hand to get a hand off in, but he leaves with the forearm, and you know, rightly judged to have a yellow card. Sure. There was a one other period, I think, when um, Australia moved the ball quite wide from a transition play, which they haven't done much of. But when they did, uh, there was a little bit of a nervous panic in the way he was defending. So I think it's an area that Australia will look to uh, move the ball to in the second half. Okay, case in the loose forward trio didn't seem to matter as CJ Stander and his units around to manage to find their way for the sole try. It was very, very uh, well executed and a, a derived from a more penalty from the Australians. Yeah, and this is, uh, uh, this is the penalty beforehand. So they go to the line again and um, the Australians just drop that down as penalty. But what a great throw that is. That's a brave call and then beautifully executed by um, Scannell. And Australia went up and competed and just missed it. Uh, Rodder just missed it there, but and then the, then the pace that the Irish guys got in and got their formation in behind there, Australia had to throw their jumper up, and they just couldn't defend I that. I think brilliant piece of play. Um, but Australia were disappointing in that uh, Ireland didn't have to be at their best today to win. Michael, as we uh, play through these final uh, couple of of, of moments. This was the penalty that was a given that was given away. Sexton was never going to miss the conversion, which then the, the penalty, which then of course put the impetus back on the Australians. Yeah, it was a penalty there, and uh, yeah, geez, that's a tight one, I reckon. He seems to be on the feet to me, but if the referee's telling him to let it go, he's got to let it go. And this is a magnificent kick by uh, Sexton right at the end there. I mean, that's just brilliant, and he knows it as well. Here's Australia right at the end here. I, you know, this this pass that went sort of astray there. And I think the TMO was right there. There's no real conclusive evidence um, that this came off the Irish player. 
Um, and so therefore that was the only decision only, he could yeah. have given. But Australia, yeah, they left it till the 82nd minute to, mm. to do this. Um, they had their opportunities before this, and there's a lot of ill discipline yeah. in, um, in giving away penalties in range and all that sort of thing. There was also a lot of uh, sort of skills, such as just simple passing that wasn't to Australian standards, and sure. that cost them dearly. Yeah, the skill set was really disappointing mm. from uh, from Australia. Passing, you know, inside shoulder passes mm. that one of the deck, yeah. pass the you know uh, speed of the ball, just one of the things that you wouldn't expect from from Aussie teams. Yeah, but a lot of that comes down to the pressure that Ireland defence was putting Australia on. They were sure. rushing up so quickly and putting you know, Beale and Foley and the, and the playmakers under enormous amount of pressure and that's where skills have got to hold up and, you know, the halfbacks today were, were passes weren't great, yeah. you know, just basic sort of stuff but, you know, credit to Ireland, a great win after a long yeah. season. Yeah. What this went the way of the Wallabies, the second was the chance for Ireland to bounce back, they have done that and then after a scrap in the first half, it came to life somewhat in the second as Australia got more possession, a little bit more territory, Ireland hung on and the boot of Johnny Sexton as has so often been the case in the past was the difference once again. We had drama into extra time beyond the 80th minute. Five penalties to Sexton. CJ Stander, the sole try scorer. Marika Korobeti, the try scorer for Australia as uh, Bernard Foley uh, added the difference with the boots, the conversion and three penalties. 20 points to 16.